Welcome to Happy Clubhouse for the review of the Bandai SD Gundam World Heroes Benjamin V2 Gundam, the leader of the Benjamin Pirates who's gotten quite a lot of screen time during the search of the first Haro in the story. He comes to us in the second round of releases for the World Heroes line along with Edward Second V who also got his own review so make sure to take a look at that if you haven't already. And just like the first round of kits, these two are actually molded together in the factory so they do share all their plastic colors. Getting right down to business, Benjamin V2 was released on May 27, 2021 and sold for a price of 770 yen. The box art is done by SK Yoshinobu who's done all the SD Gundam World Heroes box art so far and manufacturing of these kits continued to be handled by Bandai's Chinese factory. The box measures 15 by 20.5 by 7 centimeters, so it's a little bit thicker than a regular box. The short side of the box tells us that he is the fourth release in the series with everything else repeated from the front of the box. The long side gives us all the gimmicks and the accessories that we get inside for Benjamin. And then the other side only has a link to the official website and then it's all legal text. Inside the box, we get Benjamin spread across six runners with one clear runner and no polycaps. We get a sheet of foil stickers with one here for the eyes. And then these big black ones for the front of his hat, one for each side. And then these ones here for the back of the hat, one for each side. The white crest here goes into the center of the hat. And the white V here goes onto his blade antenna. The brown and gold ones here go onto the top of his front skirt, both the left and the right sides. And these longer ones here go lower down, also on the left and right sides. The last one here goes onto his shoulders, one on each left and right side. For the instructions, we get a bit of background info on Benjamin himself on the front right here. And then on the back, we get studio shots and the names of all his weapons and his gimmicks. The bottom here mentions Sun Jen, who worked together with Benjamin and Edward in the story. And then we get a two-page comic, as we always do with BB Senshi kits, here with full English translations. Then the black and white side is all for assembly instructions, as you'd expect. About 35 minutes later, we have Benjamin here before any stickers are applied, and we get the basic idea of his character here already, since he doesn't actually have that many stickers. But of course, most lacking here is the brim of the hat, which is in a single color. Of course, this won't be color separated or part separated, but without stickers or paint, this part here really does affect the look of Benjamin. Then there are his clear blue shoulders, which honestly look kinda nice, but if you really think about it, them and the torso shouldn't actually be clear, and they're meant to be solid blue. It's not the end of the world, I know, but we've seen very clever use of clear parts in the series like with Sasuke Delta Gundam that has clear bluest details, and here, they're just the entire part, which lacks grace and good design, or maybe I'm complaining about nothing. Regardless, he's pretty colorful just from his plastic, but of course we want to see him as he's designed to be out of the box, so let's put some stickers onto him. So his hat immediately looks like something we can recognize and probably benefits the most from the stickers. And the front skirts here have their belt details colored, which adds a lot of detail to that area. And yes, you've probably noticed that the shoulders there look painfully inadequate. So the clear blue shoulders may not be accurate, but at least they did look pretty nice, didn't they? Well, not so much after the stickers here, which are just a facade on the front, which is like Bandai going, hey, pretend like the rest of your shoulder looks like this, okay? And then they toss the ball right to us. In fact, the colors here aren't even right with the gold trim at the top right here, because it's not supposed to be here at all. You see, Bandai's own sample photos show this top part being left in the clear blue, so they knew it wasn't right and they left it the way it is on the sticker. This is baffling and it feels like they either didn't have time or the budget or the heart to make this look proper. They just gave up and tossed us the final product. The best solution is to leave the sticker off, and I don't know if there's a worse conclusion than that when the best solution is to not use the thing they made for you. But okay, let's balance things out with some good bits and talk about the outfit. So we get these collars here at the front suggesting that Benjamin has a coat on. And then these lower parts here shows us how long that coat is and it flows all the way down the sides of his legs. 
For SD Gundam designs, we almost always get armor or mechanical details, but we very rarely get the suggestion of clothing, simply because it's just not easy to do very well. And I think here it is done rather nicely. I mean, sure, it is chopped up into little bits, and it's not actually an entire coat that we see on him, but it's a sensible choice or else we won't see any of the V2 itself. The gauntlets here on the hand also do a good job suggesting really big gloves that flare up towards the back. And that Haro necklace is really beautifully sculpted and it works nicely with the engraved details on the top of his chest here. The two black parts on the back right here are a little bit strange because I'm not exactly sure what they're supposed to be. They seem to be a part of the coat, but since when did coats have wings like this? I mean, they don't look bad, but they make Benjamin less coherent as a pirate because, well, pirates don't look like this. And here's a quick look at the hat at the top, which is a big part of Benjamin's design, which looks good enough and it is a very unique thing among the SD Gundam kits. The plume up top has some hollow spaces on this side right here, but they're easy enough to just pretend that they're a part of the plume's detail and just ignore it. And guess what? Benjamin actually still has V2's wings here at the back, though they are kind of small. They do open up though, which is a detail I didn't expect them to have made, but they did put it in because they knew we'd want it, so that deserves a bit of credit. Okay, so looks aside, let's have a look at the weapons, starting with these daggers on the shoulders. And yes, they can be pulled off, and they fit into the hands just fine. I mean, they are really dinky, so they are meant to be a decorative thing on the shoulder more so than they are supposed to be handheld weapons, but they are a weapon nonetheless. But for more proper weapons, we have these flintlock pistols, which we get two of. They're very ornate, very pirate, and also very hollow. I think they're big enough to do their job okay, but SD designs fit fat and bulky guns, so they would've matched much more if they had more girth on them. And to go with the gun, we have this new right hand here which is tilted at an angle. These work great with the pistols to give us a really nice firing pose. And get this, if you buy the Edward II V, he comes with the same hand but for the left side. So together, you can have this akimbo firing look. And on the side of the hip, we have his sword, the hair tail. The sheath is an interesting horn shape and it does have the usual nasty empty spaces on the top and the bottom. It's more or less what we'd expect from an SD kit with that unfortunate muddy gold color. The sword itself is really nicely sculpted with a unique ocean wave motif to it. The white color looks a little bit ugly, but really all other swords in the series so far are single colored molds as well, so I'm not sure I could fault this one in particular. It's good enough for a young fan to play with and enjoy. And the sword works with the tilted hand as well, and it looks much more like he is swinging the sword. But we still have this right here, the Whale Angler, which is a bit of a nonsensical name. It's really just a big tentacle arm that also plays with the pirate hook hand motif a little bit. And when Benjamin uses this, he also gets this clear visor, which you simply peg into the Vulcan hole onto the side of his head right here, and that adds a little bit of a detail. The arm itself needs to be pulled apart, where you'll see this peg right here that fits right into Benjamin's hand. And then you can put the two halves back together, and the weapon's equipped. I suppose it looks nice with the clear blue color, but I'm also not sure how I'm supposed to feel about it as a part of the character. I mean, it's meant to be powerful, sure, but it's not clear in what way it's supposed to be powerful other than it being really big. And from the box and the instructions, it's meant to be a solid object, and here it looks like it's made of some kind of energy. Like everything about the kit, there's a lot of stuff here, and someone put in a lot of work to make all this, but objectively as a consumer, not everything seems to add that much value beyond the fact that it's here. For the articulation, starting from the top, the head goes up a little bit, and looks down a little bit as well. It turns quite a bit until his beard hits the collar. The shoulders can be pulled out like all kids in the series. And the shoulders can be adjusted on their ball joint. The arm goes up this much until the dagger hits the black wings in the back. Then they swing the other way until the arm itself is blocked by the wings. The lower arms can move on his ball joint. And they can rotate around a little bit. The hands rotate a full circle. And if you pull them out, they can be adjusted on the ball joint. The waist dips forward this much. 
and it bends backwards this much. And it has just enough clearance to rotate all the way around. The front skirt has a little bit of movement. The coattails on the sides can be nudged around a little bit. And the back skirt doesn't move at all. The legs can be adjusted on their ball joint, but they're really mostly trapped inside the narrow space right here. The knees can bend, but practically it's non-existent in the narrow space. The feet are on a ball joint and can be adjusted only a tiny little bit. So overall, Benjamin does use the standard joints for the series, but his outfit gets in the way a lot of the movement. It's not as limited as Nobunaga, but it's not nearly as fun and as cooperative as Wukong or Sargent is. So it's not very good, and it's not at the end of the world, but you know, overall it's just a little bit unsatisfying. For size comparisons, here's the SD Cross Silhouette RX78. And then here's the Legends BB Zakuto. As always, the World Heroes kids play nice with the others, and other than slightly different proportions, like a smaller head, they're more or less the same size, and they make enough sense if you put them together, so no worries here. With all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the Bandai SD Gundam World Heroes Benjamin V2 Gundam. Number 1. It has a lot of weapons, but it's not a lot of fun. If we count all the weapons, we get 6 items in total and 4 types of weapons, and on paper that sounds amazing. But you're not going to get that feeling when you have this kit. I mean, the weapons aren't terrible and you're not going to chuck them in the trash or anything, but they just don't seem to work especially well with Benjamin's theme. So they end up being a sword, a gun, and some daggers, and a giant tentacle. Cool weapons need to create story and context along with the character, and the ones here just don't seem that inspiring when you put them in Benjamin's hands. So you'll get the strange notion of being a little underwhelmed, and you can't help but wonder, you know, am I spoiled or unappreciative or something? But it's really not, it's just a kit that just never comes together with the weapons. And number 2, the clear parts aren't used well. The shoulder and the tentacle arm are brute force approaches where they just made the whole thing clear. And even though it looks good on the surface, it's really not the same standard that we've seen from the same series, where clear plastic is used for details and it's always combined with some sort of clever construction. And we just don't get that here, and it ends up being clumsy and haphazard. Now, I know it sounds kinda harsh, but just have a look at Sasuke Delta Gundam's review and you're gonna see what the same designers can do when they really put their hearts into it. I mean, that's better proof than anything I can say that this kit really got shortchanged here. And number 3, it's mediocre among many other great choices. Now, not every single model kit can be spectacular, we understand that of course. But I think if you only get one kit from the SD Gundam World Heroes line, it shouldn't be Benjamin here. It hurts me to say it because I love this design. Wukong, Sasuke, and even a more conservative sergeant are all very well balanced kits that give you a very complete character inside the box. And Benjamin here works better as a complement to the other better characters, more so than being all on his own. Which is a shame because if you're watching this then probably you also wish this kit could be so much more. So that's a review of the Benjamin V2. I wish there were more surprises and great things I could share about this kit, but it really does struggle under its own problems. So you're gonna have to be the one to either accept it for what it is, or take on the risk of making it into all it could be as a builder. Thank you so much for watching, come look us up on social media with updates on upcoming videos and sneak peeks at future projects, links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos like the review of Edward Second V. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.